stretch without a whistle here to the outset of the second half. Oh, Murray with a reverse. Are you kidding me? What a play. Murray inside. Incredible. Jamal Murray with a stroke of genius. Followed by Murray. One man to beat. Murray goes up. Throws it down. And the foul. Oh, nasty stuff from Jamal Murray with some contact. The Blue Arrow. Got to hurry, Murray. Jamal for three. You betcha! The Blue Arrow! He's one of the greatest ballers to ever come out of the Great White North. In his brief NBA career, he's already earned a reputation as one of the ultimate playoff performers of our time. Jokic finding Murray. Murray, does he got another one in him? Oh, you bet he does! That might be the dagger! From Canada to the Mile High City, this is the story behind Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray was born on February 23, 1997 in Kitchener, Ontario, the son of Jamaican and Syrian Canadians Roger and Sylvia Murray. Located about 100 kilometers west of Toronto, the Kitchener-Waterloo area wasn't exactly a basketball hotbed, but a young Murray was determined to change that, with some help and tough love from Roger. As a young hooper himself in Kitchener, Roger played ball against future heavyweight boxing champion Lennox Lewis and developed an eye for athletic talent. A generation later, it was his son turning heads. Jamal could play for hours even when the ball was as big as he was. Roger explained to Sportsnet about a three-year-old Jamal. By the age of six, Murray was playing against 10-year-olds. As a preteen, he was playing pickup ball against high schoolers and college players. Expediting his development was the fact Roger ensured Jamal was laser focused on basketball, whether that meant cutting the family's cable or keeping him from getting a cell phone. While Jamal sharpened his skills on the court, Roger trained the young Murray's mind off of it. Whether it was teaching Jamal exercises that the Bruce Lee fan learned while studying Kung Fu, instilling in his son the benefits of meditation, what the Murrays call mental Kung Fu, or putting him through outdoor workouts during the Canadian winter, Roger's training of Jamal has become the stuff of legend. Push-ups in the snow and games where Jamal was only allowed to shoot with his left hand were just the tip of the iceberg. I did um, <clears throat> squatting with, like you said, T on my, uh, on my quads. I had to squat there for a while. Um, a lot of time without a clock, so you didn't know how much time was left, which is a little bit different mentally. Um, and then uh, we had this big maple tree in the front yard, and so during the fall, like the leaves would fall off, and it would be cold, and so I would learn like picking up the leaves with my bare hands, like it would strengthen my hands. So when we get in cold gyms, it's like it's like nothing. Like it doesn't even matter how cold the gym is, how hot the gym is. The whole idea was to get him to block out what he was feeling, that it was only temporary. Roger told Bleacher Report in 2015, some kids get hit or cut and immediately think it's worse than it is. I tried to show him that pain is something we all go through that it's a part of life. If you don't get freaked out by it, you can get past it. It's no wonder then that by the time he was a high school star at Grand River Collegiate Institute and then at Orangeville Prep, Murray was impressing scouts with his mental fortitude as much as his dazzling play. He reminds me of Phil Jackson, a Zen master on the court. Murray's AAU coach told Bleacher Report, the whole time he's playing, he's in a different zone a different place than anyone else. It wasn't just Canadians who were noticing. Murray was one of the top recruits in his class, fueled by MVP performances in the 2013 Jordan Brand Classic and the 2015 Nike Hoop Summit, the latter of which came a year after he teamed up with a Serbian big man named Nikola Jokic at the same event. In taking his game south of the border, Murray committed to a stacked Kentucky team featuring six other players who would go on to play in the association. But there was no doubt who the biggest star was on that 2015-16 Wildcats roster. Murray led the team in scoring as a freshman. With some style, some talent, some aggressive play, slide by, a little kiss with the left, and some toughness exhibited by this kid all day long. After a 27-9 season that saw Kentucky lose in the second round of the NCAA tournament, during which Murray earned third-team All-American honors, he declared for the NBA draft. Months later, the Denver Nuggets made him the seventh overall selection in the 2016 draft, reuniting him with Jokic. 
Murray's rookie season was promising enough, but it didn't exactly portend greatness. He averaged 9.9 .9 points on below average efficiency to go along with 2.1 assists in roughly 22 minutes per game, with his biggest performance of the year coming as the MVP of the All-Star Weekend's Rising Stars game. Still, Nuggets fans had reason for optimism. Denver reached the 40 win mark for the first time in four years, finished the season just one win shy of a playoff berth, and Jokic had established himself as an obvious building block, with Murray a nice complementary piece on the offensive end. The breakout, both for team and player, would come the following year. In Murray's first season as a full-time starter, the NBA sophomore averaged 16.7 points for a 46-win Nuggets team that clung to playoff hopes until an overtime loss to Minnesota on the final night of the regular season. Murray finished 8th in most improved player voting, and though the heartbreak of the season-ending defeat was crushing, it also teased the big games and spotlight the Jokic and Murray-led Nuggets would earn in the coming years. With Jokic emerging as an all-star, and Murray upping his scoring again in year three, the Nuggets exploded for 54 wins in 2018-19, clinching the team's first playoff berth in six years and first Northwest Division title in nine years. Though second-seeded Denver was pushed to seven games by seventh-seeded San Antonio, the Nuggets prevailed for their first postseason victory in a decade, setting up an epic clash with Portland in the 2019 West Semis. After another seven-game series, the Nuggets fell at home to Damian Lillard's Blazers, with Murray shooting a regrettable 4 of 18 in a four-point Game 7 loss. Though that woeful shooting performance surely stung the proud young guard, Murray's overall play during his first playoff run, which saw him average roughly 21 points and 5 assists, was commendable. Above all, it was Murray's willingness to take the big shots and his ability to create them for himself that stood out, though some doubted his playmaking and traditional point guard abilities. A year later, no one would care much about his passing and assist numbers. After another strong individual season helped Denver to the Western Conference's third seed during the pandemic-interrupted 2019-20 campaign, Murray's true star turn came in the bubble playoffs. After only cracking the 40-point barrier twice in his first 314 games between the regular season and playoffs, Murray erupted for 142 points over a three-game span in a first-round victory over Utah, which included multiple 50-point performances. Shot-making ability of both Mitchell and Murray is off the charts right now. Step back three on the way, and he's got another one! Jamal Murray! Keeps it going here for the Nuggets. Are you kidding me? Jokic finding Murray. Murray, does he got another one in him? Oh, you bet he does! And that might be the dagger. Wow! A couple weeks later, he helped the Nuggets complete a stunning second round upset of the Kawhi Leonard and Paul George led Clippers with 40 points on 15 of 26 shooting in game seven. By the time the Nuggets were eliminated from the 2020 West Final by the eventual champion Lakers, Murray had put together a postseason for the ages, averaging 26.5 points on 51-45-90 shooting while playing nearly 40 minutes per game over 19 contests. Though it was overshadowed by his scoring exploits, Murray's playmaking also shone in the bubble, with the then 23-year-old averaging 6.6 .6 assists to lead the way for a conference finalist. Not bad for a player that skeptics were adamant was not a point guard. Murray's play on the court wasn't the only thing that made headlines in the bubble. After the 2020 police killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor sparked a summer of protests around the US and the world, Murray's post-game interview after scoring 50 points in shoes emblazoned with images of Floyd and Taylor showed the young Canadian's humanity. These shoes mean a lot. With all the Excuse me a lot. Take a deep, deep breath, Jamal. You were outstanding tonight. We understand that, that these are tough times. Jamal, what, what are you thinking about right now? I just want to win. And in life, you find things that hold value to you, and things to fight for. We found something worth fighting for. As an NBA, as a collective unit, and I use these shoes as a as a symbol to me to keep fighting all around the world. So I can say they give me a lot of power to keep fighting. We want to win. 
I show my motion, it comes out, so. With increasing playoff success under their belts and Jokic emerging as a perennial MVP candidate, the Nuggets appeared ready to take the final step towards championship contention in 2020-21, especially after trading for the perfectly fitting Aaron Gordon. A month before that trade, Murray orchestrated the greatest performance of his career, scoring 50 points on 21 of 25 shooting in a demolition of the Cavs. Let me get 50 with the dunk. As of November 2023, Murray remains the only player in NBA history to score 50 points without attempting a free throw, and one of 11 players to score 50 on at least 80% shooting. In the end, it wouldn't be an opposing guard or team who proved capable of stopping Murray and the 2021 Nuggets, but rather the injury bug. Murray got hit, and this is going to be Golden State ball. And Murray's down and hurt. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Testing would confirm Denver's worst fears, as Murray had torn the ACL in his left knee, an injury that would sideline him for a year and a half. Though Jokic and company kept the Nuggets competitive in the interim, the team's title aspirations crumpled to the floor along with Murray. The ailing star later admitted he feared his beloved team would trade him before he ever made it back on the court. Head coach Michael Malone assured Murray that wouldn't happen. His first thought was, man, you, are you guys going to trade me? And, and I really, and that was his, I'm damaged goods, are you guys going to trade me now? And I, I hugged him, I said, hell no, like, you're ours. We love you, we're going to help you get back, and you're going to be a better player for it. Though Murray slowly eased back into things when he returned to the Nuggets lineup at the start of the 2022-23 campaign, he ultimately proved Malone correct. While suiting up in 65 games for the top seed in Nuggets, Murray averaged 20 points and a career-high 6.2 assists on 57% true shooting. As has become customary, the Canadian guard took his game to another level during the postseason. Over a 20-game playoff run that resulted in the first championship in Nuggets history, Murray averaged 26.1 points and 7.1 assists in 40 minutes per game while shooting nearly 52% inside the arc, 40% from deep, and 93% from the free throw line. In a 34-point, 10-rebound, 10-assist performance during Game 3 of the Finals in Miami, Murray recorded the 7th highest scoring triple-double in Finals history. How about this floater though? Finger roll, high off the glass. Look where it touches. Few players have ever leveled up in the playoffs the way Murray has over the last few years. A zero-time All-Star, Murray is one of 31 players all-time and one of just 11 active players to have at least five 40-point playoff games to his name. Murray recorded those five performances in his first 35 playoff games. To put that in perspective, he entered the 2023-24 season with only four 40-point regular season performances in 410 games. Though Jokic is the tentpole on which everything the Nuggets have built stands, Murray's impact on Denver's success and the franchise's turnaround can't be overstated. There's a reason that when a local artist created a mural on a mile-high city wall during the 2023 finals, he painted not just the Joker, but the blue arrow alongside him. There's a reason the Nuggets have won seven of nine playoff series Jokic and Murray have teamed up for, taking down a boatload of future Hall of Famers in the process. The duo has rallied back from a 3-1 deficit to eliminate a team led by Leonard and George. They've run a team led by Devin Booker and Kevin Durant off its own court in Phoenix. They've swept a team led by LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It's not just because Jokic is a generational talent with a championship level sidekick in Murray. It's because the Blue Arrow is a tough-minded postseason superstar in his own right. Forged by unorthodox training methods and Canadian winters. Remember that the next time you wonder how during the most pressure-packed moments in May and June, Jamal Murray stays as cool as a January night in Kitchener. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.